Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Today we remember James of Jerusalem, brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and martyr. In the Gospel, according to Matthew, and in the Epistle to the Galatians, the James whom we commemorate today is called the Lord's brother. Other writers, following Mark's tradition, believe him to have been a cousin of Jesus. Certain apocryphal writings speak of him as the son of Joseph's first wife. Whatever his relationship to Jesus, brother, half-brother, or cousin, James was converted after the resurrection. Eventually, he became bishop of Jerusalem. In the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says that James was favored with a special appearance of the Lord before the ascension. Later, James dealt cordially with Paul at Jerusalem when the latter came there to meet Peter and the other apostles. During the Council of Jerusalem, when there was a disagreement about whether Gentile converts should be circumcised, James summed up the momentous decision with these words. My judgment is that we should impose no irksome restrictions on those Gentiles who are turning to God. Eusebius, quoting from an earlier church history by Hegesippus, declares that James was named the just. He was holy, abstemious, did not cut his hair nor oil his body, and was continually on his knees interceding for his people. As many as came to believe did so through James, says Hegesippus. James' success in converting many to Christ greatly perturbed some factions in Jerusalem, According to Hegesippus, they begged him to restrain the people, for they have gone astray to Jesus, thinking him to be the Messiah. We bear you witness that you are just. Persuade the people that they do not go astray. We put our trust in you. They then set James on the pinnacle of the temple, bidding him to preach to the multitude and turn them from Jesus. James, however, testified for the Lord. Thereupon they hurled him from the roof to the pavement and cudgeled him to death. The question is often asked whether the epistle of James was authored by James of Jerusalem. The most widely held view today is that a Christian versed in Hellenism and Judaism wrote the letter under the name of James in the latter part of the first century. The mediating view that early tradition stemming from James of Jerusalem was updated and published by an unknown Christian teacher of a later Christian generation has much to commend it. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that following the example of your servant James the Just, brother of our Lord, your church may give itself continually to prayer and to the reconciliation of all who are at variance and enmity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.